A lot has changed in the nearly two years since the Steam Deck launched. Literally hundreds of updates, an ever-expanding catalog of deck-verified games, and a bevy of useful accessories have helped Valve's handheld, Linux-powered PC solidify itself as more than just a flash in the pan. Now, we can add hardware revisions to that list too. And in the 2023 OLED version, which replaces the LCD original without increasing the price, Valve has addressed virtually every criticism leveled in our 2022 review with a surgical precision. The new Steam Deck OLED is an upgrade across the board, but let's make one thing clear right off the bat. This is not Steam Deck 2. Valve has been very clear that while it does plan to make a second generation Steam Deck at some point in the future, that device won't see the light of day until there have been enough advancements in mobile processing power to produce a true generational upgrade. As such, you can expect the Steam Deck OLED to have the exact same gaming performance as the original. Now, that might not be much of an exciting selling point for gamers, but it means that developers don't need to worry about a moving performance target when optimizing their games. So it doesn't fundamentally change the experience of playing games, but it makes that experience much better in a number of significant ways. The clearest and most obvious is the new OLED screen, which though still displaying 1200 by 800 resolution is bright and vibrant and makes games look even better than before. It's actually slightly larger too, measuring 7.4 inches diagonally up from a flat seven. It's HDR certified, capable of a thousand nits of peak brightness with wide color gamut. And it has a refresh rate of up to 90 Hertz, which is an increase from 60 Hertz on the original. Side by side, the difference is clearly noticeable. The neon streets of Cyberpunk 2077 glow brighter and more vibrantly while shadowy areas are bathed in an inky blacks. Even in SDR content where the screen maxes out at 600 nits brightness, the clarity of OLED simply looks excellent. You can't really see the difference on this video unless you're watching on an OLED screen yourself, but anyone who's made the jump from Switch up to the Switch OLED model can attest to the improved visual experience. Besides that, when you're holding it in your hand, everything about the new deck is physically the same, though you might notice it's 30 grams lighter. It's only about a 5% difference, but it's not insignificant in something that you're holding for a long period of time. It's still a fairly chunky handheld that's nonetheless comfortable to hold with excellent ergonomics and a slew of useful control options, ranging from its standard gaming inputs to its unique dual touchpads, touch sensitive screen, and programmable back buttons. However, the new screen tech has changed a few things on the inside as well. Valve's engineers told me that the OLED panel they're using this time around is actually a bit thinner than the original LCD, which means there's slightly more room for everything else to grow into. Most importantly, there was room for a larger battery, 50 watt hours up from 40 on the original. It's also better about using that power thanks to an updated AMD APU that's more efficient. Again, it's not more powerful, so you won't get better frame rates, but it's able to hit that same level of performance while using less power and running cooler. All of these things, combined with the fact that the OLED screen itself uses less power, despite running at a higher brightness and higher refresh rate, allows Valve to claim that the Steam Deck OLED gets 30 to 50% better battery life compared to its predecessor. Here's the thing though, based on my testing, that's actually a conservative estimate. Running Cyberpunk 2077 at 50% brightness the Steam Deck LCD lasted just over an hour and a half from a full charge, while the Steam Deck OLED lasted a full hour longer. That's a 66% improvement and a significant difference in the amount of gameplay you can expect before needing to reach for the charger. Another benefit of using less power is that less heat is generated, and along with redesigned thermals and a larger fan, that makes this a noticeably cooler handheld. You can see in our side-by-side -side thermal testing that the OLED model averages 5 to 10 degrees cooler at hot spots around the vents, and there's less heat spread across the rest of the device. There's also a bunch of other little improvements. The OLED model supports Wi-Fi 6 for two to three times faster downloads if your router supports it. It also gives Bluetooth a dedicated radio instead of sharing one with the Wi-Fi, which means better Bluetooth connectivity overall. Valve says the haptics, trackpads, and touchscreen have all been improved as well. I can't say I noticed much of a difference on the haptics or trackpads, but the touchscreen is definitely slightly more responsive, making it easier to punch small buttons and type on the on-screen keyboard. 
Taken alone, these changes are not much to write home about, but they are improvements across the board nonetheless, and taken together, simply make for an even better experience using the Steam Deck. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time on gaming performance, because in every test that I ran, the results matched those of the original deck within three frames per second. In other words, the Steam Deck is still a highly capable handheld PC, especially if you dig in and tweak settings to find the optimal balance of performance and battery life. What has changed is that there have been a boatload of competitors that have come out since the original Steam Deck, and the OLED's power is slightly less impressive relative to Windows-based handhelds like the Asus ROG Ally, the Lenovo Legion Go, and many from Aya Neo, among others. But the margins there are relatively small, and most of those are significantly more expensive. In my experience, I've found the Steam Deck to be far and away more convenient and enjoyable to use than any of those thanks to the smoothness of the Steam OS interface. That is, unless you want to go into desktop mode and mess around with your files, in which case you'll need to know how to use Linux. The one area where those Windows handhelds have the upper hand is when playing games that don't play nice with Steam OS. It's still a pain if you want to play games that aren't on Steam, with varying degrees of difficulty. Most from Epic Game Store, GOG, and itch.io are possible if you're willing to dive into the Linux desktop, install some third-party launchers, and jump through other compatibility hoops, but it's definitely more of a hassle than the out-of-the-box ease that Windows brings. Even then, there are still some notable omissions. Games that use easy anti-cheat, like Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone, remain unplayable on SteamOS, and even though Destiny 2 is on Steam, Bungie will actually ban you if you try to bypass the SteamOS Proton incompatibility. Sure, all of those compatibility problems go away if you install Windows on your Steam Deck, which is entirely possible, but does bring its own set of headaches. Valve's firmware updates have fixed some, but not all, of the problems that we called out when we first reviewed the Steam Deck, so I still can't recommend sacrificing the quality of life user experience of SteamOS if you don't absolutely have to. Given all of the improvements Valve has packed in, you might expect the Steam Deck OLED to cost more than its predecessor. Instead, storage has doubled for essentially the same price. We still have three price tiers, but now the $399 entry point is the exact same 256 gig LCD model that used to sit at the $529 middle tier spot. The new middle tier costs $549 and gets you the new OLED version with all of the aforementioned upgrades and 512 gigabytes of storage. Meanwhile, the $649 OLED comes with one terabyte of storage. As before, the high tier model comes with an anti-glare coating on the screen, as well as an exclusive carrying case. Meanwhile, the old 64 gig and 512 gig LCD models are dropping even further in price to $349 and $449 respectively, but those will only be available while supplies last. The Steam Deck OLED is a clear, across-the-board improvement on what was already a fantastic gaming handheld. Steam Deck has matured greatly since it launched, and though there will always be some holes in its catalog that don't work out of the box, the fact that you can easily play 2023 games like Diablo 4, Baldur's Gate 3, and Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty on the go with few compromises make it a fantastic way to clear your backlog when you're away from your main PC. The OLED model brings hardware tweaks beyond the absolute gorgeous screen, but the real star of the show is the improved battery life, which puts the Steam Deck significantly more clearly in the portable category than simply a handheld device that you'll need to keep plugged in most of the time. Add in a slew of small but altogether significant improvements combined with twice as much storage at the same price, and the Steam Deck OLED is a fantastic device that is an obvious choice for anyone looking to get into handheld PC gaming. Heck, if you're constantly running down your battery on your current Steam Deck, it might even be a big enough deal to consider upgrading. For more coverage of Steam Deck and the new Steam Deck OLED, keep it right here on IGN.